I've owned it for about 14 years. Daily drive it. Really? Yep. Drive it to work every day. 220,000 on it. Um, it's the original transmission. Most of the original parts underneath. I've replaced like bushings and springs and shocks. What What is the body of the Daytona? It's It's it not is, a K platform. It's an extended K platform. The actual code is G. This is okay. a G body. Um, but underneath, like it is a it's a K car front end, K car suspension. Um, the wheelbase is slightly longer, but it's based on the Dodge Aries. Plymouth Roland. Get out! This, yeah. like, deep down... Deep down, it's the same car. They they extended or, or shortened the wheelbase on a lot of these cars, but they're all based on the K. Guy runs up to me, he's like, oh my god, this is, this is the car from Back to the Future. And I, I, I couldn't break his heart, I was just like, yep, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Most car shows, they think it's a Shelby Mustang. How do, how do people get that? Because no Mustangs ever had pop-up headlights. I don't know. I it's have got no Shelby idea. written in the but door, it, right? it's Shelby. Oh, Most people don't know Shelby right. or Chrysler. This door handle, <laughs> same as the caravan. Yep. <laughs> Steering wheel, caravan. Everything's out of a parts bin. Uh, oh. oh, what else is caravan? That, the, well, the head that's unit a, they use in every That's a Cherokee radio. Oh, you took it out of a Grand I, Cherokee? Yeah, the Grand Cherokees came with the CD player cassette combo, which is really nice. Yeah. And the factory cars either had a, uh, a cassette player or a CD player. Is the boost gauge legit? It is. They're, the factory gauges are notorious for being off. That one I have tested against aftermarkets. It's within a PSI or two, like it's real close. So I just haven't bothered putting another one in. But I'm running 13 pounds of boost, so it's not a... It's not like maxing the gauge out or anything. I, I keep this thing fairly low power because I daily drive it uh, and I don't want to blow anything up. <laughs> Especially with all the miles that are on the transmission. You know what I remember about my dad's caravan? Was just driving it with these. With yeah. these, uh, well, the cruise see. control buttons. And the cruise control is perfect. Like it, it's exactly right. Yeah. Nice. If you look at the fenders, you can see the cracks on the end where the body shop screwed up putting it back together. And I just haven't had it fixed yet. It's a stock 2.5 liter Chrysler. And they use the same engine in the turbo caravan, yeah? Yes. Yeah. The turbo caravans were all 2.5 turbos. Um, same as the 2.2, it's just four. It's uh, stroked. It's a longer stroke to it. What is different about the engine in this when it had the uh, Shelby badge on it? Suspension mostly. Um, all the Shelbys at least in Daytona's were turbos, and the Shelby cars had stiffer suspension, bigger sway bars, and they usually came fully loaded, like uh, power everything. Okay. They were sort of luxury models versus performance models. In this year, starting in 90, the, they started coming with what is, what is known as a Turbo One, which means it didn't have an inner core. You got a full-size radiator, and then there's supposed to be a hose that goes from the turbo straight to the throttle body, and it was low boost. I added the factory intercooler, but it's actually mounted in the nose. If you look through there, it's just sort of mounted down there facing down right now. But it's a factory intercooler. It's supposed to be mounted Oh, right I see here. it. Hmm? Uh, if you look at, like, this one over here, Chris's, his is, a, his is a factory setup. The intercooler is mounted next to the radiator, so it heat soaks, and it's awful. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I had that set up for a long time. You cannot get those radiators anymore. Nobody makes them. Mm. And mine started leaking, so I just threw the original design back in. This is out of a V6 LeBaron. Nice. And it's all aluminum. So it cools great. I had AC all the way up here. It was a, it was a good drive from Richmond. Nice. Uh, I'm probably making a little under 200 horsepower with it right now. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's over I mean, 200 torque. Like, it's very right. torquey. So to put this in modern perspectives, like in the 80s, oh, I'm sorry, this is 93, you said? This is a 90. 1990, 1990. They were uh, Chrysler was able to do almost what a uh, Fiesta ST is doing today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This was kind of like the Fiesta ST of the late 80s, early 90s, um, and people treated them like that too. They would hoon them and beat the crap out of them, and that's why a lot of them look like garbage, run into the ground. Mm -hmm. People complain about head gaskets. That's a funny thing too. The original head gaskets from Mopar were a composite material, uh -huh. almost like a like a compressed cork type stuff. You're kidding. And they would fail. That's why they failed. They the didn't Mopar, use they didn't use metal. They didn't they use, use metal. metal. 
if you got a Mopar Performance head gasket and anything that's made since then, like the new Felpros, the Victor Rains, all those, they're a metal layered gasket and they don't fail. Nice. I mean, unless you screw up. Right. <laughs> Obviously. But this has got a Mopar Performance gasket on it. I did that. Um, but otherwise, the engine is stock. As far as bottom end and all that, I haven't done any porting on it or anything. Nice.